What's up everybody? Alicia here. Welcome back to my channel and if you're new, hey. Um, you may or may not know but in 2024 I'm planning a through hike attempt of the Appalachian Trail. It's going to be a reattempt. I attempted Nobo in 2022 and this year in 2024 I'll be attempting Sobo. So I wanted to pop on here and do a quick little video talking about the logistics for a Sobo AT start. Um, just statistically speaking, there are way more Nobo starters than there are Sobo, and most of the vloggers that you see on YouTube are Nobo starters. There's very little, very few um, southbound vloggers. So a lot of this stuff I didn't really know until I started researching um, and trying to find out the info myself, um, whether that was from the Sobo Facebook groups uh, or from a couple other really good resources that I located that I'll put in the description below. Uh, the first one of those is going to be, it's sort of like a vlog that's dedicated to um, Soboers. It talks about a lot of the logistics and things that you need to for a Nobo start, or sorry, for a Sobo start, and um, just gives a lot of really great information, really good resource if you're considering Sobo. Uh, the other one that I'm going to link to is actually one of the hostels up in Maine. It's in Millinocket, Maine, and I'll talk about them a little bit later, but it's the Appalachian Trail Hostel and Outfitters. I'll link their site below. They have a lot of great info for Soboers as well. All right, so for a Nobo start, it's relatively pretty easy. Um and not a lot of pre-planning is necessarily involved um, unless, of course, you're flying down by yourself, you're flying into Atlanta, and you need to figure out how to get from Atlanta to Amicola Falls. I think it's like two, two and a half hours. Um, so there are some logistics involved in that, but for the most part, um, Anoa starts pretty straightforward. You just get to Amicola Falls. There's a lodge right there, right at the start of the approach trail. Your um, AT registration to get your hang tag is right there at the beginning of the approach trail. And um, really all you have to decide is do you want to do the approach trail or not? If you do, great. If you don't, um, you also have to figure out a ride to uh, the Springer Mountain Trailhead. But that's pretty much it. And the only reservations you really need for a northbound hike are um, lodging reservations for the night before your hike. So whether that's staying at Amicola Falls or elsewhere. Um, I know there's like the hike in, there are also some, um, I think there's like a shelter sort of near Emma Glola Falls Lodge. I'm not hundred percent sure where there's, where that's at, but I have heard that there is. So you kind of just have to figure out where you're staying, maybe make that reservation, um, and then go from there. Now for a Sobo start, there is a little bit more complicated of a process. To start Sobo, let's first of all talk about how remote Baxter State Park is. Um, Baxter State Park is pretty remote. Uh, Millinocket is the closest town, and I think that that is like a half an hour away, and that's also going to be the closest lodging, uh, as far as I know, for like hotels, hostels. Um, you know, you might be able to find some like cabins or Airbnbs or something closer. I don't really know. I haven't really looked. Um, but Millinocket is pretty much going to be the town if you're going to be staying somewhere um, the night before you summit Katahdin. So there are, um, there's one hostel in Millinocket in particular, which I mentioned earlier. That's the Appalachian Trail Hostel and Outfitters. By the way, the owners are great. They're fantastic. They're super helpful, willing to answer any questions that you might have, um, willing to talk about logistics with you a little bit more detail. So um, definitely reach out to them if you have specific logistic questions for uh, your specific situation. But there is the option to also camp in Baxter State Park, of course. Um, you know, the night before your hike, before you summit Katahdin, you can certainly camp in Baxter State Park. You do have to make those reservations pretty far out because um, all of those camp spots do fill up pretty quickly um, at Baxter State Park. They are on a rolling four-month um, reservation system. So four months before the date that you want to camp or reserve for at Baxter State Park is when the reservation opens for that day, for that campsite, etc. Um, you can call Baxter State Park to make a reservation or you can do it online. They have a great online reservation system. 
To make a reservation, head to reservation.baxterstatepark.org and click Make a Reservation. You'll select the date that you want to reserve for. Again, this is going to be four months in advance. So in this example, I'm selecting June 5th. I could have reserved on February 5th. Select Camping and the Campground of Katahdin Stream Campground. That's going to show you all lean-tos, tent sites, etc. You can narrow down to just tent sites, which I've done here. You'll see all available tent sites. Anything available is going to have that blue plus sign, which when you hit that, that's going to add that tent site on that date to your cart, like you can see here. Now, in this screen, you'll also want to make sure that you have the correct number of adults and children, etc. listed. You can also add a non-resident gate pass here, which I'm going to talk a little bit about later. But basically, if you're driving into Baxter State Park in a non-main vehicle, you'll need to add this. If you're taking a shuttle um, you know, from Appalachian Trail Hostel and Outfitters, you do not need it. At this point, you would then proceed with payment and you would get your reservation confirmation through your email and all would be good. And the campground that you'll most likely be looking at is Katahdin Stream Campground. That's going to be the campground that's right along the AT. And at Katahdin Stream Campground, there are, oh gosh, I want to say like 10 campsites, tent sites. And then there's also a handful of lean-tos that you can reserve as well. And ideally, if you are coming in, um, you know, you might want to stay the night before your climb up Katahdin at Katahdin Stream and also uh, the night after you summit Katahdin and then come back down um, because I think it is a pretty solid effort to climb up and down Katahdin and then hike out to the next um, campsite where you would be able to camp outside of Baxter State Park. So um, everything I read online recommended staying in Katahdin Stream Campground the night before and the night of night, the same night as your Katahdin climb. Now, the um, exception to that would be if you're planning on actually staying at the Appalachian Trail Hostel and Outfitters in Millinocket. Um, you can stay there the night before your climb up Katahdin. They have a 6 a.m. shuttle that will take you to Katahdin Stream Campground to start your climb. And in that case, you would only need a reservation for the day that you plan to summit Katahdin. So all that being said, if you're planning on camping in Baxter State Park at all, um, either the night before or the same day as your Katahdin uh, summit day, you're going to want to set a reminder on your phone for four months um, in advance to that date so that way you can get online and make a reservation. Um, there are options to climb Katahdin if you are not planning on camping there. So let's say you're planning on staying at Appalachian Trail Hostel and Outfitters the night before your climb, and then you're planning on hitching a ride back to Millinocket the same day after your climb to stay at the hostel again. Um, definitely an option. You can definitely do that, but you can't just show up to Baxter State Park and um, climb Katahdin. You need a permit to climb Katahdin. And by that, I mean you either need a camping reservation or you need a uh, parking reservation, essentially, uh, to climb Katahdin. You need some sort of Baxter State Park reservation in order to be allowed to go up Katahdin. Um, if you're not planning on camping there, the easiest would be to get a parking reservation and go from there. Now, there also is a uh, gate pass of sorts that you need to get into Baxter State Park in addition to whatever reservation you have. This is only applicable to out-of-state residents, so people that do not live in Maine. If you're driving into the park, whether someone's driving you in to drop you off um, or you're driving in yourself and parking your car there and then moving it somewhere later, um, you will need a gate pass. Now, if you're using, say, Appalachian Trail Hostel and Outfitters to shuttle you into Baxter State Park um, the morning of your climb, you will not need one of those. They are main residents. Their car has a main license plate on it. You don't have to pay the gate access fee, which I think is $16. Um, so that may or may not have been confusing, but essentially to start at Katahdin, you can't just show up and climb. You need a reservation of some sort whether that's a camping reservation or a parking reservation for Baxter State Park. 
Now backing up just a little bit, um, I don't know much about this because I'm not flying up into Maine, but if you check out, um, I think it's the, the hostels website, they have a lot of great information about how to get from Bangor, Maine, which is actually where you would fly into, to Millinocket. Uh, there's a lot of information about what bus you're going to take, etc. So go check that out if you're flying in uh, to Bangor and you need information on how to get to the hostel. Um, that will lay it all out for you. And then honestly, booking with the hostel is just your best bet. They do the shuttle. They also do a really great um, like Sobo special. I'm not partaking in it, but they do sort of a pack shakedown and a bunch of other things um, that really gets you off on a good start um, for your Sobo start. All right, so what happens um, the day of your, your Katahdin summit? you know, day one of your hike, whether you're driving in that day or getting shuttled in, or you stayed at Baxter State Park the night before, you'll need to check in with our ranger um, at Katahdin Stream Campground to get your, I think there's another permit that you have to get that they just, it's like a handwritten permit. I think Novo uh, hikers get it. Also, it's just like this little yellow card from what I understand that Honestly, a lot of hikers just like to have as a souvenir. Um, basically, I think it's basically just like a permit that if any rangers were to stop you along your hike, um, it's proof that you checked in with a ranger and you had a reservation of sorts to actually be climbing um, up Katahdin. So you check in there, you can get a weather report. Um, they put it out at, I think it's at 6 a.m. every day, maybe 7 a.m., um, they put out a weather, weather report for the day, and if you, um, like, let's say you're not staying at your tent site or lean-to until later that night, and you don't want to carry everything up Katahdin, um, they do offer slack packs at the ranger station, so you could leave your, all of your gear that you don't need to summit Katahdin at the ranger station, take a slack pack up with the essentials, and then get your the rest of your gear when you get back down. So that way you can go um, set up your tent or get situated for the night in, in your lean-to. One tip that I'm just gonna throw in here that I read actually on that blog site that I'm linking below, especially if you're starting in like June or July, that is black fly season in Maine. So the suggestion is to not go with a lean-to for your camping reservation because it is going to be buggy. You're going to be eaten alive if you are sleeping in a lean-to in Baxter State Park in June or July. So if you're able to and there still are spots available, book a tent site to have that protection from those black flies. Um, that's just a little side note that I wanted to make sure I threw in there for uh, your sanity. <laughs> um, so anyway, you'll probably sleep the night then at Baxter State Park um, after you summited Katahdin, and then you'll be heading out at Baxter State Park. There's my dog um, tiptoeing and click clacking in in the background. Um, so anyway, you'll be exiting Baxter State Park on day two. Most likely you'll be um, heading through a ball stream campground. There is some food um, and snack options there from what I understand, um, but it's very important to note that you are not going to want to resupply there for um, the 100 mile wilderness. I think it is a very expensive store and you're just not gonna want to. Um, otherwise you'll be spending a lot of money. So come prepared for um, the 100 mile wilderness with all of your food. And then after that, you're going to be entering the 100 mile. So, um, yeah, you're going to need a lot of food to start off. Um, you know, the hostel Shaw's and uh, Appalachian Trail Hostel and Outfitters both offer food drops um, in the 100 mile wilderness. So you can certainly arrange that with them. Um, that way you only have to carry like half the food that you would otherwise need to. So definitely check that out if you're interested otherwise you'll be carrying upwards of like I don't know five six seven days worth of food um, depending on your mileage plans um, which is just a lot and it's unnecessary if um, you can get a food drop and you want to pay for it then absolutely go for it I know I am and then um, 
Your next town is going to be Monson, Maine. So that's going to be over 100 miles from Katahdin till you get your next to your next town. And it's in Monson where you actually will pick up your AT hiker tag. Um, the ATC visitor center is there in Monson. That's where you're going to um, do all that registration, get your hiker tag. You of course can stop in Monson on your way up to, to Millinocket if you, if you so choose um, to get that hiker tag first. Um, but if you don't, then just know you're going to be hiking uh, for over 100 miles until you get that tag. Um, I know some people don't feel like an official through hiker until they get that, but uh, that's where you will get it. There is not an ATC um, like visitor center or anything like that in Baxter State Park or in Millinocket. Um, the first opportunity to get your hiker tag is Monson unless you go before you get to Katahdin. But yeah, that's the general gist. I hope I did an okay job of explaining it. Um, definitely check out the two sites that I talked about below. Um, they will just reiterate all the information that I just um, provided. Uh, so basically, if you're planning a Sobo hike of the Appalachian Trail, you want to make sure that four months in advance of the day you want to be camping or summiting Katahdin, you set an alarm on your phone or something to remind you to make a reservation, whether that's a camping reservation or a parking reservation for Baxter State Park. Katahdin Stream Campground is the most ideal. Um, make sure you do that. Uh, if you forget or you wait too long, there are ways to go about it. Um, you know, you can post in any of the Sobo Facebook groups and ask if anyone has a room in their campsite. Most of the tenting sites um, do have room for like six people, you know, two or three tents. So definitely post in there if you've waited too long to see if anyone is willing to share their reservation with you. Um, I think a lot of people are willing to, so it doesn't hurt to try. I do just want to call out, especially if you are familiar with the Nobo process of what happens when you get up to Baxter, there is, um, a campground called the Birches that is available in Baxter State Park. However, just be aware that campground is only available for people that have hiked in at least 100 miles to that point. So really it's just for um, section hikers coming from at least Monson um, or through hikers that have come all the way from Georgia or they're doing a flip-flop of sorts. Um, Sobo hikers are not permitted to stay at Birches. So just be aware of that. Don't plan on you know, don't bank on staying at Birches because you really technically aren't allowed to as a Sobo hiker. They try to reserve that for people that have been hiking north that don't have as good of a capability of pre-planning the date that they're going to get there um, to make a reservation in advance. Sobo hikers have that benefit of knowing when they're going to get there. They can make a reservation um, and that's that's why we're not allowed there, I would imagine. As for my specific uh, logistical plans for my Sobo hike, um, my husband and I are actually going to be driving to Monson together. We'll be arriving in Monson the day before my uh, summit day, and Jordan is dropping his car off at Shaw's is the plan. Uh, we haven't talked to Shaw's yet, but the plan is to have him park his car there, pay whatever fee that they, that they have for that. Um, ideally I would also like to go to the ATC visitor center to get my hiker tag if we have enough time. Um, and then we're going to have a shuttle coming to pick us up in Monson, uh, that I arranged through Appalachian Trail Hostel and Outfitters. They're picking us up in Monson and shuttling us to Millinocket where we'll be staying at their hostel, um, the night before Katahdin. So we have a room there at the hostel, um, 6 a.m. shuttle to Katahdin the next morning and then we'll be starting or sorry I should say 6 a.m. shuttle to Katahdin Stream Campground the next morning and then that's where we'll be starting our hike up to Katahdin and then back down and then we're staying at Katahdin Stream Campground that night after we summit or like that same night after we summit before continuing on to our, um, the rest of our hike. Um, Jordan is actually hiking through the 100 mile wilderness with me. So he's with me all the way from Katahdin until we get back to Shaw's where he will get his car and then drive home from there. We are also having a food drop provided to us 
like in the hundred mile somewhere um, by Appalachian Trail Hostel and Outfitters. So again, definitely hit them up. Check out their website if you're going Sobo. They're a great resource. They offer a lot of great services as well as Shaw's. Um, so definitely check them out. Feel free to leave any comments below, especially if you were a Sobo hiker and something took you by surprise um, related to the logistics of starting a Sobo hike that maybe I didn't mention. Maybe I'm not even aware of it, um, but definitely leave a comment below. And if you have any questions, uh, drop those in the comments as well. I'd love to hear from you and answer any questions that I might be able to answer. But like I said, a lot of great information on the two websites in the description uh, for you to check out. So I hope you found this helpful um, or enlightening, especially if you're a Nobo hiker, to kind of see what Sobo hikers have to uh, think about before they start at Katahdin. So um, next video is we're finally going to be getting into the gear talk. Um, next video is out on March 3rd, 3-3, and we are covering the big three. Um, what better day to do a big three video? then three, three. So look forward to that and I will see you then. Bye.